Simbu is a mountainous province locked in the middle of the Papua New Guinean highlands. At its northern boundary, it has the country's highest peak, Mount Wilhelm, at almost 15,000 feet or 4,509 metres. It is the most rugged of all of PNG's provinces. Almost 50% of the land is mountainous, with deep narrow valleys and fast flowing rivers. It has a landmass area of 613,000 square kilometres. Simbu is one of the more densely populated provinces in the country. It is very condensed in the northern part, and especially around the Kundiawa, Gembo and Karawaji areas, and pretty well served with dense road network, reaching just about every village. The southern half sparsely inhabited Karamoy and Salt or No Man District with poor road network and some parts of Karamoy district can only be reached by plane. The current population for Simbu stands at 376,473 as of the 2010 national census records. One fifth of the people born in Simbu have migrated to other provinces Therefore, there is a mismatch between the estimated population and the actual population in Simbu. There are six districts and Kundiawa is the main town and provincial capital of the province district. The populations for each of the districts includes Kundiawa and Jembol have 78,521, Karawaji 93,107, Chuav 39,021, Gumin 56,860, Sina Sina Yon Go Mugul 56,805, Kari Moi Nomen 52,159. The Simbu province has one provincial hospital, two rural hospitals, six health centres, 26 sub health centres, and 77 community health posts, supported by 367 health staff. The Provincial Health Division provides basic management support to district health and church health services. The division is responsible for the delivery of medical supplies, providing manpower requirement to the districts, identifying training needs, conducting training, resource planning and budgeting for the overall operations of the health programs and facilities. The division ensures that all health facilities are well maintained and developed, as well as providing medical supplies, equipment and tools, and that they are used properly. <laughs> Improving a public health system at community level is an important component to reach the universal health coverage in any countries. Uh, I have recently visited Papua New Guinea to support with the measles and polio campaigns. Then I was able to visit three days in one of the provinces in Simpo. Then during that time I have visited the, the provincial authorities and the, the district uh, level of health facilities and a uh, uh, couple of community level health centers and communities and everywhere and, and met uh, different levels of health professionals including that uh, provincial health authorities and the district health staff and WHO representatives in the country and even some national representatives who visited that area and I was able to uh, know about the ground situations especially at the lower levels, at the districts and the community level through my visits. Here I am presenting the, my findings. It may be helpful for you. Well, including yourself. Yep. And you have been trained for one year in that uh, UPN, UPNG. UPNG. Last year. Last year you did And all the other health staff? Through that uh, CSW school training. Okay, okay. Two years ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. years. It's open 24 hours outpatient, but okay. uh, antenatal and Family planning, we normally see them once a week. Yeah, so we give them date when to come. Uh, once a week, then you conduct the family planning. Yeah. And immunization, how frequent? Uh, daily, daily. Daily you have the clinic. Then yeah, that uh, immunization, antenatal care, postnatal care, deliveries, yes. treating children. 
you treat the children in what care out what care everything the outreach also you yes, go out we do we do how frequently you go out ah uh, every month every month yeah. and you take the vaccine and walk around yeah we walk around and we give okay and you do the outreach also yeah how, how many outreach sites you have seven how many total? is 22 22 22 normal routine sites okay 14 14 clinics 14 oh, you have 14 clinic so we, sites every month we cover all of them all, all 14 sites. sites you visit yeah mm. that's right how frequently you cover the seven sites like monthly monthly you cover every month you every go to the month, place yeah every site but monthly every, every month. month you cover every all the sites routine sites um, then every month 23 days you are out every you month you one team is yes Th that's done every month every month once a month. Once, once a month once a month once yeah. a month yeah. 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 yeah then once a month then 14 days you will be going out yeah. Yeah. So but you don't have the vehicle how will yeah. you go how do you go <laughs> Sorry? Vehicle, uh, you don't we, have we walk you we walk the yeah. and we go oh. and this outreach ones we normally go and sleep yeah how many kilometers it may be from uh, here yeah it's not far uh, uh, the, a, the forest is uh, the yes. forest is the the Karando and um, Namayufa. How many hours will it take to walk? Uh, it's around one and a half hours. One and a half hours walk hours. to that place. But one, how do you, how do the people know you are going there? Mm, before we are going, uh, we, before two to three days, okay. we go to that side. Uh, we usually send messages that we will okay. come to that side. We have pastors who are actively involving in this kind of programs. They are voluntarily helping us. Uh, we send the information out first, okay. telling them that this time will come, so they will be mm -hmm. ready, so we just go and give and come. Okay, to whom you send the information? Uh, through some of the, the, the village, village members okay. came for treatment here, we send them that this time, on this mm -hmm. date, will come, so okay. must be there, all there. So they will get ready Sometimes this, we send the message through community leaders. Okay. Or, pastors or something like this, so they inform the community and they, yes. they, they, mm -hmm. they, they stay around and we go and give. And all the children will come for different purposes, for vaccinations, what are the other services? Mm -hmm. Vaccination, sick, and like mm -hmm. other diseases. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. You give them uh, anti -worm treatment? Mm -hmm. anti worm treatment, memendasols and other things do you give in outreach? Yeah. And antenatal care, do you give anything, um, iron and folic acid, something? Yeah. You give? Mm -hmm. Yeah, primarily the main reason is for immunization, but we do mm -hmm. clinic also, I mean, normal clinic, not clinic, but uh, sick ones. Mm -hmm. We took some medicines with us. Mm -hmm. We take medicines with us and see those who are sick and healed, mm -hmm. we treat them as well as uh, the kids and immunization programs mm. also. Other services like family planning, family antenatal, planning too. antenatal? Family planning, antenatals, yes, we are doing it. It's all integrated. Uh, we that. also conduct antenatal clinics okay. and also family planning and okay. also outpatient. Those who are sick, we also treat them. Then I decide, then you do everything? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. And when you're going, how many children you may be immunizing when you, when you go there? Uh, depending on whoever is available we just give you have no records of children how many children are in that village uh, and we have a target population yeah also. target population yeah. but you don't know exactly how many children are in the village and who is coming who is not coming you are not aware we are not aware of yeah. that but like uh, 40 to 50 40 yeah, to 50 right, children so will right, come right, and all right, so. okay is there anybody in that village having the list of yeah. all the children no. no. Then uh, is there any uh, village health volunteers you have in the village? Yeah, yeah. But they are not paid. Yeah, they are not paid. They are not paid. Mm -hmm. In the campaign, you know exactly how many children, because you have a mobilizer, you have a person to the village, and you know exactly how many you are treating. Yeah. But on the routine, because that person is not there, you are not getting the actual picture. We don't have a permanent one, but mm. up on such uh, special programs, okay. we do pick and pick random guys and they mm. participate for 20 kina or 10 kina allowance for mm. one day only. Mm. Temporary ones, but no permanent ones. Permanently at the grassroots level, village level, nobody maintaining the list of no. children and um, other things. Nobody. Currently, you don't have any... any Currently, uh, we don't have okay. anyone.
and when at the village really level then care of, uh, okay workers. Just, uh, yeah, okay do you have of, such village health workers uh, yeah we don't have such health workers here you okay. don't have you mean no. you don't have no so okay. if you have say seven sites then if you have seven village health worker so do you think will it, uh, your things will improve you that that person can uh, tell exactly how many children and yeah and if they if they are paid uh, they do they have the capacity to maintain all the children's name and maintain yeah. and bring when you are going yeah, do you okay. think then if you are doing like that you can reach all the children mm. when we tell them to run it sort of a full time job mm. they expect to get something from us yeah. which we don't have any but that, how, but how we can improve that part say so if you have a focal person in the village do you think is it helpful i think uh, this uh, village regulars i think they are very keeping village, it village yeah. health worker okay then if you if you if you provide some village health workers for each village do you think that you can exactly tell how many children you have and how many you have reached i think yeah that will do that will yeah. do will it helpful or it is uh, even now you are satisfied with your what you are doing currently Exactly. that will be helpful that will be us. helpful yeah. then that village health worker can facilitate you that even though you are moving he can communicate at the yeah. but currently you don't have that system no we don't have the system you don't have the system okay yeah. do you Family get any incentive when we go for the outreach incentives yes after the outreach when we come back we just submit the reports with the names of those people who mm -hmm. participate and okay. send it up there to our provincial health quarters and the quiet quarters mm. quiet quarter people there they make us our uh, incentives or what we call allowances for okay. three to five days we slept outside in the local nearby villages with people and come back uh, are you getting that payment yes uh, how much around how much that when you go for three to five days better it's 70 kina per night okay so, thank you thank you very much as we have noticed that the, the village health volunteer system is not good. actively working in simple province then we wanted to meet couple of uh, uh, district health officers to uh, know about this thing and you have a system at the community level yes community health volunteers you have Yes. Village by village, you have the volunteers. Yes. But they never been paid. Never been paid. But if you have a very small per diem every month, how much they may require? Depends on the funds availability. You see, we yeah. do it. They, 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 no, the expectation say that of their ah, work is. Twenty kina. Twenty kina. Yes. Then immunization is just a starting point. Yeah. But when they are going, they don't need to go only with the immunization. They can go with the antenatal mothers. They can go with Nutrition. the folic acids, and the mothers can Nutrition. come. Then all these mothers, they don't need to walk all this way from here. Then they can get that from oh, there. Everything. No, that's what there. we are doing normal. Yeah. I mean, routine clinics. Hmm. Routine clinics we normally have antenatal mothers. Hmm. Uh, for the will do educational on nutrition mm, yeah. yeah and other related yeah health issues mm. but i think the problem is it is not done systematically am i no correct? no yeah yeah. Not, yeah it Because, is not systematically mm. second it is not been done uh, it it depends on the availability of funds and availability yeah. it is not a routine yeah it is once in a while you know they just say for example they if they receive the funds and everything they go and they do the work am i correct yes. but, but if, if you want if you if you want it systematically mm. we have to develop this system i think what are the major challenges say if you want to reach each and every child in this your districts mm -hmm. what are the major challenges you have what are the major problem you have okay. thank you the major challenges uh, i have like i wanted to get get to know or get to register all the children under five in my district but mm. i am unable to have money to pay for the uh, village health recorders mm. that that will do this work for me okay. and uh, in that way they will i will know exactly the number of children under one mm. and under five in all the villages but okay. i'm handicapped because yeah. i don't have funds i already mm. had uh, mm. plans with the family health coordinator mm. but we are unable to implement mm. that okay. because of lack okay. of funding how much yes. of fund how many people and how much of fund required for that one uh, for this one for one one um, ward council 
Mm. We were initially trying to uh, have a release record for each uh, council board, mm. so we wanted to try it out first. Mm. And uh, 20 kina, we decided that we would pay a 20 kina for mm. that mobilizer to do this work for us. And mm. as we go, we wanted to see how we go. But we mm. haven't tried it out because of that. Uh, yeah, the major challenge is that we don't have uh, regular fuel on hand. Okay. So if there is regular fuel on hand, the family coordinator and the team will mm. do regularly. But uh, fuel is one. Uh, one challenge. Yeah, we have a shared vehicle, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. vehicle is like double cab Hilux, and mm -hmm. this one is unable to reach everywhere because of the road condition mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, some road are bad, and we need uh, a land cruiser mm -hmm. that will help us a lot. Every time when the ambulance is used by them, we, we call them because mm -hmm. we have many mm -hmm. emergencies okay. and all that, so we, mm -hmm. we disturb them a lot. Mm -hmm. And if they have to have a vehicle on their, for their own, that will help us a lot in the immunization activity and the family planning activity also. What about the capacity? Capacity of the people, you have to build the capacity. Okay, training, yeah. for, the, training for the... Training for the... Training for the coaching yeah. and the, uh, uh, our, our staff yeah, as well. But so you have adequate staff? We have good number of staff. Good number of staff. And we can train them, but uh, mm. the last training they had, maybe it was mm. maybe five or six years mm. ago, and mm. they need to build their capacity. And the also. last training was conducted of five, five or six years before. Yes. After that, no systematic training no systematic. was conducted in that, any on the cold chain side, vaccine management or anything. No. Mm. And uh, cold mm. chain maintenance as well. Mm. Some many years ago, people were mm. trained, but mm. when we have the issue at the facility mm. level with the cold chain maintenance, mm. Yeah. Right now, they've gone down with yeah. the yeah, idea, so yeah. we need the training of our whole chain logistics. The two more is like, yeah. one is a motivation for these people. Okay. As they go out for patrol, mm -hmm. and when their patrol allowances are not being paid, mm -hmm. they, they, like, mm -hmm. they feel discouraged yeah. to go on to do the patrols. Yeah. That's the outreach, yeah. and that's one. And the, the other final one is uh, <coughs> we have communication issues in our some of our facilities like uh, Yandime and Wangoi, mm. they have to go to a site where they can get the coverage to text mm. messages to us okay. in regard to communication. So mm. that we have it for them. Uh, whatever the cold chain situation in this facility, do they have the refrigerators and the vaccine storage mm. facilities in those facilities? Uh, we, we should have a solar system in place would be much better than the, the gas yeah, operated yeah. trial. Okay. Because and of those, uh, geographical zones uh, we can't uh, transport uh, ox uh, oxygen, I mean, uh, gasoline there. So I think uh, in Trawa we have six health facility. Oh, four health facilities have uh, solar fridge installed. Uh, oh, functional? We, functional. Okay. So we should, uh, we need to two health subcenter, we need uh, solar fridge. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming and yeah. thank you for getting our issues. So yeah. we are. We are happy. Thank you and God bless. This is a frequent landslide. Sorry. Do you have any such village health volunteers to have the line listing of the this now? We don't have any. Okay. But the idea you're bringing about is a good idea. Mm -hmm. We can have some help volunteers in place to do some demography under five years mm -hmm. so that we will know exactly how many children we have on the sites mm -hmm. to vaccinate. For okay. normal routines, we when we go, mm -hmm. we grab those who voluntarily come, come to the post, but those who are hiding away, we cannot catch them and we don't know them mm. to this point now. So the idea you're bringing about is best that we can have this demography in place with the health volunteers. So when we go out to the post, mm. uh, they will know exactly the children they have and the register and they will, more like a roll calls, they will bring them to the post so that we vaccinate every mm. children. Exactly, thank you.
Do you think that information system in this province has improved over the period of one, last one year with the polio efforts and how the system has improved? Yes, let me start with the information system in, during the first round of polio. Uh, Simbu province was the pro only province in the country who was not even able to report how many children they immunized during round one. Mm -hmm. So when I was being sent here, uh, the WHO uh, Keith, the coordinator, uh, categorically asked me that Dr. Raj, please give me the number how many children Simbu have immunized. So that was my first challenge here. So I, uh, so I, I first, uh, you know, see the what is the current MNE system was at that time, and I found that all team members mm. are reporting to the MNE focal person at the provincial level. Mm. So there is no decentralization, mm. and that's why this provincial person was literally uh, tired because on 140 teams are reporting. So it's, mm. it's a very Herculean task for him, and he was not able to perform. And there were no system at the provincial level to collect the information from districts. No, no, no. That is simply all the all the all the uh, team heads, vaccinators mm. from mm. the uh, vaccinator team has to mm. report to the MNE person directly at the province. Mm. Then uh, when I came here, I, 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 I told the provincial person that it will not work. We have to make uh, the system, cascades should be there for MNE mm. so that we, uh, we can capture the information time in, in time and uh, timeliness and, 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 and correctness both. Mm. So we identified, uh, I requested uh, Jerry to provide me one MNE officer which, who is good in MNE. So he suggested Matthew come. So I, uh, I, I, I call him here because it is for him also it is the first campaign and we are just one week ago the campaign. So I call him, I explain him that uh, you know we need to make a cascade. Mm. Then uh, I ask him to identify one data officer from each of the district. I convince province people that okay all the team mm. will send the data to the health facility in charge, OIC. OIC will collect the data and send it to the district data manager. And district data manager will send the data to the uh, provincial mm -hmm. people, provincial focal person. And, and I think the uh, that MNE uh, help us a lot in improving the program in the province. And Matthew played a very critical role into that. Do you think this uh, same system can apply to the routine immunization system in future and that uh, our routine immunization system in the Simpo will improve the similar way that you have improved the polio coverage system? Absolutely. When the system is there, one system is there, it is uh, to switch over with another program is not a difficult task according to me. And right now the, 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 the previous task was very difficult because nobody was knowing how to do it. But now everybody know how to do it. So we just have to, uh, you know, we just have to train only the village health volunteer to how to send the data, f data flow to the, uh, uh, to the respective uh, OIC. Otherwise, the system is already there, so it can be done. But uh, I am hearing the village health volunteers are not uh, active or not functional. What is the major reason? Uh, is it functional or not? It is not non-functional. It is non-functional because of financial constraint and mm. capacity building. Mm. They don't know what to do, how to do. They are not been provided incentive for any of the work. Uh, even uh, the health facility level also, the workers are there. Workforce is available. Mm. They are willing to work. But the capacity building is the major issue. They don't know their last training being conducted of the immunization is very far. Okay, after that only they they learn something in this uh, polio and measles campaign. And uh, I think this campaign have make them uh, you know learn a lot of things. And uh, I'm very happy that they are a very fast learner. Even the vaccinators are also very fast learner. They are learning the things very well, and uh, they are implementing it as per the lead of the program. That is also one of the beauty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for thank your support thank over this field. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Matthias. How are you? Where did you work earlier? Uh, in my district, Sine Sine Yangumuk district. Okay. That's uh, Kerenga Kuas, my MP. Okay. That's that side. Okay. How many years you worked over there? Uh, three years now. Three, three years, years you worked there? Yeah. I was up uh, in uh, Warhead. Okay. For seven years and okay. in Chimbu, now that's my three years. Yeah. Okay, then that district level you worked at the district health uh, information officer. Oh? Uh, no, this this is control officer. This is control yes. officer. What and how how did you move to provincial level? Uh, that was uh, last year, uh, mm. Jerry. Mm. With that round one, uh, polio round one campaign. Some of the mm. data were not, you know, mm. uh, reported timely manner. Mm. And, uh, so. Mm. He, 
he identified in me because uh, I have some experience with uh, working with the uh, church, church okay. group up at uh, Wabek. Mm. So with the time, uh, mm. reporting time speed, okay. I have this, uh, this experience, so he identified me to come and work with. They have identified you, your expertise at the district level, yes. then they moved to the yes. regional level. Then I am hearing very good news from yes. uh, WHO and um, yes. uh, provincial authority, you are doing a great job and yes. uh, information. Do you think that this work will continue in the routine also, that yep. same information yep. management? Yep. It was the major. Uh, it yes. was the major shortcoming in the provincial levels. Yes. Now it is improving. You mean? Yes. It's it's, it's improving. You believe that it the in the routine system also you can continue the same information yes, system. Yes. Yes. There's a. I'm happy with Doctor Raj. Okay. He coached me and trained me and uh, okay. shaped me a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there are community health record. Yes. Yes. There was a system. Yes. There's a system, yes. but I'm hearing that is not effective here. Okay. Uh, why it is not working and do you think that is the most effective system if it is reactivated? Uh, those uh, eight post workers, mm. um, sometimes and most times they are, um, they are not like supported mm. uh, in some like resource or capacity okay. building. Mm. So they are just, uh, they are just there and mm. forgotten. Okay. Yeah. Most times. Okay. So if, if, we, if we do the capacity building of yeah. that uh, health post yeah. and village health volunteer, yeah. then we can Im uh, make an improvement, particularly yes. in immunization and MCS service. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Okay, that's Most great. Those, those are the local people. Mm -hmm. They're there with the community 24 mm -hmm. hours every mm -hmm. day. It's their place. Okay. But we train them, we select them, identify mm -hmm. them, put them there. Mm -hmm. But some of the uh, necessary support that they need to help them, mm -hmm. never reach them. Never it, reach. It, it Do you think that the provincial health authority, yes. after that one, they, they will get the proper allocation for that particular? Yes, yes, yes. That system yes. will improve? Yes, I know that system will improve. improve. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. No. That thank you for your good yes. service and I really appreciate for your good thing. Thank you. Hi, Nora. Can you tell us that how the ongoing polio and measles micro planning exercise will help to the uh, our normal routine program in future? Uh, for the for the micro plan, like um, we have done um, for the MR, uh, it's really helpful because uh, also in the training we try to build a capacity of health as well as the volunteers. And now the volunteers, they begin to understand the importance of uh, what we are trying to do. So they, they already, they spoke you know, positively to take the, um, uh, especially with the organization um, work on board, because they were trained on, uh, some of them were uh, lucky during the, their time, so they were called to train for the mobilizer. And they know that it is really important and they participated really well. And they said, this, we should have done this long time and we should be part of the IT. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was uh, yeah. never done. So the, with the approach that we are taking for that uh, MR, that should be continued during an, uh, the uh, routine immunization and also it can uh, also involve other health activities as well. And we, we should be the poker person mm -hmm. at the community level. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, they came positively. So. The way we are going, uh, we can adapt that our micro plan for the MR to do that uh, routine. Uh, as, you, as we have discussed, that uh, during our visits, we have observed the rural health volunteer system is not at all effective in this province. And currently when we are discussing with the district, the districts are very much interested to reactivate the rural health volunteers to improve the immuni uh, routine immunization services. I would not like to know that what is the provincial perspective, what is the provincial thinking on this regard? They have identified village health volunteers already. Yeah. There is somebody out there in the village who is willing to help and support. Mm. Some of them have been voluntarily coming to call for children to come in, vaccinate them and all that. Mm. They have been running now all these mm. kids to their vaccination site. Yeah. And there are people who are willing to work. Mm. They are lacking the knowledge. Yeah. Secure fund yeah. for training. Yeah. Secure fund for training so yeah. they can 
train these really helpful volunteers mm. how to record register kids in the village is mm. what you said you, yeah. they don't have in the village mm. so they can they, they, they should be training in the village you know mm. they can go out to train so several mm. funds for that mm. you can ask them how much they need mm. they can do it they can go out and train them they should be trained they should be trained of should course be they should be trained the training part we are not ignoring mm. they should be trained they should be identified but the payment should be a sustainable way oh, yeah. you cannot depends on unicef and who to pay that you government has to have allocate some mechanism that there should be some kind of incentives you know they can yeah. decide within the national government I mean, the province will have mm. the organization how to give them the incentives or not mm. it's not going to be in a, like a fortnight day or monthly but you know yes yeah. they come with the data they yeah. see the data put into the data mm. they give them some incentives or something like that yeah but uh, you know the training itself mm. we have to take to that okay. do you think that is a that is a good strategy for the country i think it's good because at the moment we we are looking for i mean we don't have the denominators, you see. Mm. So we are doing on guesstimations. Right. Mm. So if these village at are there, they can have the figures for these mm. children mm -hmm. when they register them in the book. So we don't have to go to national statistics office. We can go and ask these people how many children ch ch mm. that has yeah. been uh, delivered Born. during the last mm. uh, few months, mm. and then we can see how many babies are there. So mm. it's very easy. Look, what do you think about this uh, community health volunteers? Uh, do you think will it give the positive results or? It will definitely because uh, they are with the community. We don't know how many children are in the village. They know better mm. than we do. Mm. Currently, so, we, we don't know. Mm. Currently, we don't know. Mm. So they are, they are leaders in that village. They know exactly who is living there, how many number of children are under five, or number five, or how many old women or men are in the village. So, this is a good idea. In the provincial authority, after the provincial authority come, do you think that provincial authority can allocate this money for the village health volunteers? We don't know. We can advocate to advocate for that because we saw the results and we can advocate because for Because we, we, we would like that to happen, so we, should ad, uh, we will advocate. See. Si. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's, uh, you know, uh, if, we, if we produce some results mm. and show to them, yeah, I think then people can, uh, the member of parliament and other uh, high advocacy level meeting can, we can show them that okay, mm. before this intervention, mm. the situation of routine immunization in the province was like this. Mm. After this intervention, it is like this. Mm. If you want to continue this, mm. we need this much of support from you mm. and then they will convince. Okay. Right now, for the that's my perception during your my nine month uh, stay mm. here. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. actually, our provincial government is supporting uh, immunization activity in this uh, province. Mm. Um, so, it's a matter of us uh, itemizing the, the vote for, for that activity in our next budget. budget. And then mm. we so, can try, try it out. It's a good idea. Yeah. Because uh, we are always complaining about targets and mm. our denominators and we are not achieving... Uh, Mm. Any, you know, good coverage and all that, so we can try it. It's a mm. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one of the strategies that will improve uh, both our immunization coverage as well as deliver service delivery. I see this uh, way three is one of the way forward. Wow. So, well, we are in support of... Uh, okay. so, at our level and we try to yeah. okay. do they have in the community the village health volunteer when you when you involve them mm. uh, when you put them into when you give them training and when you give them the title as a volunteer, uh, village health volunteer mm. you know, they become they, they, they feel happy uh, the, the incentive that we give them it's not that um, I mean it's not that much we can give but you know they they feel happy that they have this title in the community and they, they gain respect from the community you see. So people look up up to them as you know the leaders in the community. You see, mm -hmm. so that's not a kind of um, let's say um, promotion in the community that we give them. Mm -hmm. so they feel happy. They don't. They, I mean, when that they, they enjoy. Is they enjoy. The, they, enjoy they, enjoy, they enjoy to become part of the health workers. Yes. To have volunteer village volunteers, it will help us a lot in terms of immunization because they are the ones on the ground identifying children in their own village. And they can bring forward, they can uh, do some uh, minor assessments like uh, as, uh, what 
det er femlig at gå ned og sætte. Det kan du uh, weighing in den. Mod dem. Har de ikke bare mere cases, der ikke har de mere end all these uh, uh, mantrisen og support, så so uh, de kan bring forward. This a uh, this a good idea where we cannot uh, send all our elder officers. The religion will will do most of the work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I support that idea. We should seek funding. We can train also them. Mm, yeah train, train them, them. build their capacity in terms of training and then what they should do. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, also some women are trained to be uh, VBAs. They also do did some uh, deliveries in some of those uh, remote areas. Mm-hmm. And instead of you no know, getting paid, you no know, we have to allocate funding for them. Uh, there was no funding, so instead they such the patient to pay them. And once the patient uh, don't have any money, they don't come forward to deliver your assist by them. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit difficult. So we mm-hmm. have to strategize to get this.